my gosh. Well, it is just kind of a yuck, cloudy, windy day here in the collapse of the Mayan Empire, the global industrial empire, and any other empire. Uh, here, it is a Friday. It is March 3rd, 2023. I am absolutely thrilled to say I am getting ready to get the hell out of this depressing hotel room, get my ass to the Cancun airport and back home to my own shithole country. Hallelujah. Here on Friday, March 3rd, 2023. But <clears throat> Before I head out, since it is Friday, and I don't think I even did my ecological meltdown roundup last week, we're going to do what we try to do every Friday for my last video from all Mexico. We are in the shithole of Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Playa del Carmen, Mexico is one of the most depressing places I have ever been in my entire life. Everything that is wrong with this planet, everything can be found in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Anyway, but before I get out of here, <clears throat> we're going to uh, check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mangabay.com and see what has been on their minds well, I've been out, I don't know, drinking margaritas and ogling beautiful women. And as we frequently do, we're going to start out in Brazil. In Brazil, criminals dismantle one of the best preserved swaths of the Amazon. Hmm. This is the Terra do Meio Ecological Station spans over 3 million hectares, otherwise known as over 8 million acres in the Brazilian Amazon state of Pará, and is home to hundreds of wildlife species, including many threatened with extinction. <clears throat> Despite its protected status, Tierra do Meio has come under growing pressure with data showing deforestation doubling in 2022, reaching nearly 11,000 acres last year. Huh. Environmentalists say the destruction is being driven by illegal, line, illegal loggers, miners, and land speculators. And they fear a new road slicing through the protected reserve could usher in more destruction. Uh, but anyway, advocates are placing their uh, advocates are placing their uh, hopes in Brazil's new president, de Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. Yes who has promised to crack down on invasions into protective reserves and rein in sky-high deforestation rates. All eyes are on Lula. Yes. Um, what is going on in Kenya, in the sub-Saharan African hellhole of Kenya, we have an unabating drought persisting in Kenya where pastoralists, can you say cattle grazers, are struggling as millions of their livestock perish and vast, vast swaths of crops are dying. About four and a half million people in the country are now food insecure. International food agencies are calling it a dire humanitarian situation. And then next to that story, so what would you be doing if you were a Kenyan pastoralist trying to feed your 12 children in your mud hut. Hmm. Herders, meaning cattle 
farmers turned to fishing in the desert huh? amid severe drought, putting pressure on fish population. Hmm. As Northern Kenya's unabating drought continues, a growing wave of pastoralists are finding it challenging to keep their livestock alive and are therefore switching to fishing. In Lake Turkana, the world's largest desert lake. However, environmentalists, fishing authorities, and some fishers themselves worry that potential overfishing and increased pressures on fish populations will cause a collapse in fish stocks and the lake's entire ecosystem. Hmm. Authorities are also concerned about the rampant use of illegal fishing gear, such as thin mesh nets that catch undersized fish in shallow breeding areas, uh, and an illegal tilapia smuggling network draining the lake by the tons. Uh, some environmentalists are calling for better enforcement of regulations to keep their livelihoods afloat. Oh uh, yes, so uh, <laughs> notice you will not see the words overpopulation anywhere. Okay, from Sub-Saharan Africa back to the uh, Amazon where the Yanomami crisis they're one of these, you know, the Yanomami, you know, being one of these noble, savage, original invaders of the Amazon. Yanomami crisis sparks action against illegal gold in the Amazon. Yes. Brazilian attorney General Augusto Aras requested the federal Supreme Court to overturn a law establishing the concept of good faith <laughs> of gold buyers. Yes, the good faith of gold buyers, which eases illegal gold laundering. Under the law passed 10 years ago, the word of gold traders is enough to ensure that the mineral came from a legal mine. <coughs> opening a route to the illegal gold extracted from protected areas and indigenous territories such as the Yanomami Reserve. Um, anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the Yanomami are working in the gold mines. All right, but we're getting tough on corruption in Indonesia. Okay, Indonesian palm oil billionaire gets 15 years for corruption. Yes, a Jakarta court has sentenced a palm oil tycoon, Surya Dharmati, to 15 years in prison for corruption that allowed to him to establish illegal palm oil plantations in Indonesia. Yes, the court also ordered him to pay more than $2.7 billion in fines and restitution for the environmental and social damage caused by the illegal uh, plantations. Good luck on that. Does anybody here think that this billionaire is going to spend one night in jail? One night in jail. Now, we might have to cough up a little bit of money. Anyone thinking that this, this corrupt Indonesian palm oil billionaire is going to hand over 2.7 billion bucks to the authorities? Good luck. <clears throat> okay, let's get back to Latin America where we actually see good old Mexico.
mention it is. I honestly don't know, guys, if this has anything to do with the uh, $20 billion tourist train being slammed through the jungle uh, a few miles from here. My guess that is that it probably does. Just a wild guess if this story can be found uh, 20 minutes from where I'm sitting. <clears throat> Chinese investment continues to hurt Latin American ecosystems. China has taken a special interest in deepening ties with Latin America over the last 20 years, providing billions of dollars in loans for mines, electric grids, trains, and roads. But <clears throat> many of China's projects ignore regulations protecting the environment and local and indigenous peoples. Uh, a report delivered this month to the UN Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights explores 14 cases from nine Latin American countries in which there was some example of an environmental or human rights violation these cases include mines, hydroelectric dams, oil fields, animal processing plants, and trains hmm, across Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru, in Venezuela. Yes, do you think so? Can we say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, the single biggest infrastructure project ever undertaken in the history of humanity which one of my uh, interviewees here at Collapse Chronicles, I always forget which one, claimed probably correctly that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the number one single biggest ecological threat to life on planet Earth. Let's make no mistake what the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is. Okay, China, with no help from the rest of this planet, will destroy all life on this planet. Okay, let's see. You don't kill people to protect forests. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into this. See, you know, this, the, this ongoing debate about whether there are, there is room for humans inside protected areas. And you know which side I am on. I'm not advocating killing people, but I am advocating uh, maybe give the other 10 million uh, species that we share this planet with, a little space, a little bit of breathing room. You know, I'm not going to get into my noble savage rant. For tigers in Nepal, highways are a giant roadblock best avoided. Yes, do you think so? Wow, here's, here's a real groundbreaking study. A new study indicates that the pressure of roads and vehicle traffic in tiger habitats could take a toll on the big cat's behavior and long-term survival. Hmm, do you think so? 
Right. So what is going on with the Andean condor in Peru? <coughs> Scientists confirm that plastic is a new threat to the Andean condor in Peru. Researchers have found high levels of plastics in the diets and regurgitated pellets of Andean condors in Peru. Um, the results show that 100% of the samples con collected in the marine coastal zone and 85% of the samples from the Andes contained plastic. Geez, so what is it looking like in the sub-Saharan shithole of Cameroon? You would not believe this. Looking probably a lot like Montana. <clears throat> Treacherous pits and lakes left in the wake of Cameroon's abandoned mining sites. Hmm. Inactive mining sites in Cameroon are continuously abandoned with no restoration by foreign companies, can you say, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Hmm. Leaving behind huge open pits in the ground that later form into artificial lakes which endanger local populations and damage ecosystems. Uh, here is the latest kid drowning in one of these pits left behind by the Chinese consortium Cameroon Malin Construction Conglomerates. The, uh, they have identified more than 700 mining pits left behind in the Cameroon, claiming the lives of more than 200 people so far. Cameroonian legislation obligates mining companies to refill their mining pits after their operations. Despite this, the law is not being adhered to or enforced. Hmm. Imagine that. So what is going on with the carbon market saving the planet? <clears throat> carbon market intermediaries, intermediaries act with little transparency. A new report reveals that very few of the brokers, resellers, and cryptocurrency vendors that act as intermediaries in the voluntary carbon market reveal the commissions and markups on the credits they buy and sell. I bet. Uh, anyway. All right. Leonardo DiCaprio has a new snake named after him, and as we have seen so many times, the day that it is named as a new species, it heads directly to the endangered species list without passing go. All right, how is France? And our planet-saving president, Mr. Macaroni, saving the planet. <clears throat> France seeks European Union okay to fund biomass plants and burn the Amazon rainforest to power a spaceport. There you go. As the European Union finalizes its third renewable energy directive, France is seeking an exemption to enable the European Space Agency and the French Space Agency to build and operate two biomass power plants in South America's French Guiana. 
an estimated 5,300 hectares. That's about 13,000 acres of Amazon rainforest would need to be cut down and then the biomass crops grown on the cleared land would be used to service the power plants for the spaceport. Yes. Um, they've already won a similar appeal. Meanwhile, environmentalists are decrying the French Guiana biomass plans and French President Emmanuel Macaroni's passive support of them, not only for the Amazon deforestation it will cause, but because biomass burned to produce energy has been scientifically shown to release higher levels of carbon emissions than coal. Yep. Okay, here's how AI is uh, saving the planet. All right. And we're going to wrap up in Ghana, in Ghana, where environmental campaigners are suing Ghana's government to block mining inside the Ottawa Forest Protected Area Biodiversity Hotspot. <laughs> Good luck on that lawsuit. Okay, and now that I have, uh, that brings us to the end of this week's uh, ecological meltdown roundup. And now that I've gotten that off my chest, I guess uh, I can start packing my bags, getting the hill out of Mexico into the hell hole of Texas. But at least a little dog should be back on camera very soon. We will be reunited with Sancho Panza tonight and my gas sucking truck, which is the two things I miss, my dog and my truck. Get out there and enjoy your little dog and your gas sucking truck while you still can. Bye guys.